What's going on, everybody? It is December 29th. Uh, we've got a nine-game slate. It's me. Um, some value out there, which is great, but not a lot of good games. I, I would really be interested in that Wizards Rockets game if the Rockets weren't on the back-to-back. Um, but Raptors Hawks is yuck. Bulls Pacers Heat Nets Pels Mavs. Thunder Bucks is fun, just from like a calibration standpoint. King Suns is a train wreck. Uh, like it's just all of these games are pretty bad. <laughs> so let's just dive in now. First game up is Wiz and Rockets. Um, there's no line right now, mostly because of Chris Paul and the back to back. Um, I've got it even. 107.5 implied total for both. Uh, we'll see where that ends up shaking out. Um, so looking at uh, the Wizards to start, and I don't love anything right out of the gate. But, you know, we'll see. Um, they're really looking to limit all the mid-range opportunities. Um, I think that we can look at Porter and Oubre, and that's... I don't I don't really love Beal or Wall. So we'll look at um the Wiz to start. Okay. Wall is eighty six hundred on ooh, let's lengthen my table here. Not the best start so far. All right, Wall, 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Um, yeah, I don't, I can't see taking Wall. It's, it's not a bad spot. Um, I don't love the price on DK, so if I were gonna take him, it would probably only be FanDuel. He needs 43. He's got one game above 43 in his last six, but he does tend to play better at home. Um, I wouldn't take him on DraftKings. Now, Beal, on the other hand, 8,100 FanDuel. 7,200 on DK. So he needs 40 for value on FanDuel. He's done that in his last two and in five of his last seven. Uh, I think this is a good spot for him, and I, I will likely have a good amount of Bradley Beal on DK just because of his price. It doesn't jump off the page from like a matchup perspective, but he's probably you know, a couple hundred dollars too cheap. But the two that I would want to pay attention to the most would be Porter and Ubre. Uh, Porter, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, so he needs 33 on FanDuel. He said it in his last two. Uh, this strikes me as a pretty decent game for, like, fantasy scoring. Not that I'm reinventing the wheel there, um, but I do like Porter. Ubre, just to check his minutes, 23 in the last one, which is kind of concerning. But he needs 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. So he needs 22 on FanDuel. I mean, he could really easily get there. Um, I don't love the price on DK. So I think I would stick to just whoop, FanDuel there. But I really like Beal's price on DK. That's, that's the best thing going for this team. And I don't have really any interest in Marquee for uh, Mike Scott. 
Gortot is still in play on... I, I should just load that up now. Gortot still in play on FanDuel at um, 4,400. He's 5,200 on DK. It's just not even close. But 4,400 for Gortot. He's a guy where, you know, he needs 20 for value, basically, or 22 for value. But he can do, you know, he's got two 35-point games in his last in the last seven that he's played. You can't ignore it at that price. Now for Houston, again, no line, so I have them in roughly the top five or six in implied total. Coming off a rough loss to the Celtics after being up a bundle. Chris Paul questionable right now. Nothing of note from a matchup standpoint. The Wiz are pretty neutral. So let's take a look at Houston now. Harden is 11-8 on FanDuel, 11-6 on DK. How has he played against Washington in the past? Pretty well. Man, I don't really love it in that back-to-back. -back, but that's too good of a matchup to pass up. So I like James Harden. Nothing crazy. If he makes it into my optimizations, he does. But it's not a disregard. I can't. I can't see taking Paul on FanDuel at 9,300. You can get there for 88 on DK, but I don't love that either. Eric Gordon's price is better on FanDuel, 5,800 to 6,100. Um, needs 30. He's done it in four of his last five. Two of those three of, or two of those four have come without Chris Paul. I don't think I want Gordon. I'd rather have Beal in that same game. Um, Ariza, 5,500 and 5,700. I'm going to pass there. Ryan Anderson doesn't necessarily seem like he's the guy. 4,200 and 5,100. I'd probably be okay with Ryan Anderson on FanDuel in a GPP um, since Capella is out. But the Rockets prices are just kind of crap on DK. I don't see anything else there that I'm terribly interested in. So let's move on to the next game then. Uh, Raptors and Hawks. Raptors, 113.75 implied total, which would be first on the night. Hawks give up threes in droves, so this is probably going to be a Kyle Lowry night and not so much a DeRozan night, but we'll see. This is a much better Lowry night. Has should have the ability to get off shots that fit him a little bit better. So I will be prioritizing Lowry uh, much more than DeRozan. We'll like Surge. I want to take a look at OG, even though he's only playing 20 minutes a game. It's a good matchup. Yeah, that's probably it. So, Toronto. When did Toronto's office, offense just become incredible? So, DeMar is 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. Um, I'm, I'm fading Duran uh, there. Yeah, Duran. DeMar. <sighs> I gotta wake up. It is Friday, guys. It's been a long week. 
Um, Kyle Lowry is getting locked in for me automatically. I'm not worried about Schroeder at all. He's 7,700 on DK. Um, I'm going to have an absolute ton of Lowry. It wouldn't shock me. I would expect to have more than 50% of him, and I, I wouldn't shock me if I ended up at 80. Surge, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, let's see how often he hits that 30 mark. So he's done it two out of his last five. Surge, that's not bad. I don't know why I just clicked on Surge, but he's going to have the opportunity to get some threes. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm going to pass on OG. He has that ability to just hit a bundle of threes, but um, that seems risky. I don't want anything else from there. Let's go to Atlanta. much better so Atlanta uh, 102.75 implied total 15th on the night out of uh, 18 you know not very good um, not gonna be a terribly large amount to like here unless there's very specific matchup plays but this is not um, not the one we're looking for Nope, not Washington, Toronto. Okay, so I think it's okay to look at Collins um, and probably Schroeder. I don't really see anybody else of value. Schroeder is 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. So he needs 38 for value on FanDuel. He has hit 38. We'll, you know, we'll say that he's at value here. So the last two have been great. He's gotten there on another 37-pointer. Definitely has the ability to get there. Um, I'd like to see. Does he ever? What's his? What's the minutes hit that he takes? So even in a blowout, he should probably be getting a decent amount of time. Um, nah, I feel like I'm forcing that. Collins, his minutes have been yo-yoing, right? Yeah, he's 24 now. I've got him at 24. 5,700 FanDuel, 5,200 DK. So that's 28. Um, it's just in and around that area. I'm going to pass on everything from Atlanta. Let's go to Chicago. The Bulls hosting the Pacers. 105.75 implied total for the Bulls. That is 11th on the night. They are three-point favorites at home. Um, and the Pacers are without uh, Victor Oladipo which is pretty gigantic for the Pacers and for us in fantasy. But first, Chicago Bulls. The Pacers give up a ton of threes, so um, we definitely want to look at Holiday, Denzel, but Markinen is the big one for me right now, and then Miritich. Okay, so I don't really have any interest in Dunn. 8,100 on FanDuel is probably too expensive. I don't, I don't love this matchup for him. Um, although I can entertain it on DK. 30. Let's just say he needs 40. He's had two 40-point games in his last seven. 
has been in the mid 30s for most um I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go for it this time. Uh, Miritich, 6,500 and 6,200. So he would need 30. Uh, had a rough one in his last time out, but he's had four 30-point games in his last seven. Uh, I think the matchup fits him pretty well. So I'm, I'm willing to take a look at Miritich. Justin Holiday, 5,200 and 5,500. Um, so he needs 25. He's been steady there. Um, I'm okay with that. And then Markinen, uh, 5,400 and 5,300. So he needs 27. He's only done that once in his last six. But I think that he can have... A solid shooting night against the Pacers. Hmm. So he would probably be up against like Thad or like Sabonis on certain possessions. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with marking in as well. Um, this will be that scenario sort of like uh, the Kings from a couple nights ago. I'll have little bits of all three of those guys, but I won't be I won't be going heavy on any of them. Um, so next we have the Pacer side of this, which is obviously way more interesting than uh, anybody else's. Pacers, 102.75 implied total, which would be 15th there without their main creator. Um, I haven't looked to see if or how much the prices have moved now that he's out. I'm hoping they didn't move at all. Okay, so... Not the best Thad game. But I think everybody else is okay. So Miles Turner, 7,900 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Uh, once again, I'll be queuing up Miles Turner. Um, I wouldn't want him on FanDuel. It's a DK only play. 6,800 is just amazing. Collison now, 6,300 FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. So he needs 31 on um, on FanDuel for value. He should get well over 30 minutes with uh, Oladipo out. Um, he does get done, which is a little concerning. But at the same time, he's Darren Collison. He's been in the league long enough to, to not be too, too worried about that. Lance, 5,800 and 5,600. I was hoping that was going to be a little lower. Fantasy Cruncher, projecting Lance for 41 fantasy points tonight. I've got him at 26, so a little bit of a gap. <laughs> um, look, I like Lance tonight in that he's going to play and he's going to shoot. Um, he's not someone I'm going to have a ton of because he's Lance Stevenson, but I think you need some bullets of Lance in this uh, expanded role. I'm going to pass on Thad. Uh, I'm going to pass on Bojan, who is, in my opinion, a bit too expensive. And um, Corey Joseph. No, no, not enough upside there. Okay, to the Heat we go. Heat hosting the Nets. Um, 106 implied total, which is ninth. The Heat are six-point favorites at home. White side. Uh, obviously is back now half of their team though still out as best I could tell no James Johnson no Dion Waiters uh, no Justice Winslow why 
why is why is that not popping up? Uh, oh, that makes sense. I need to change all of these. Skirt. To. Sorry about this, guys. Change team to. VR name. Nope, not VR name. What is it? VR team. Why the fuck would I do that? Cool. Okay. So, interesting game for the Heat here. Everybody benefits except for Wayne. This will be interesting. I think Whiteside's going to be in play. So, for Miami. Richardson, 6,300 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. So, don't play him at all on DK. And he needs 31 on FanDuel. Yeah, um, you should be firing up Josh Richardson for sure. But only on DK. Don't pay that heavy freight on... Or, hmm. Only play Josh Richardson on FanDuel. Don't pay the heavy freight on DK. Whiteside, 7,500 FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. I've got him at... 25 minutes. But I'm interested in that. I'm going to have a little bit of him there. Goron, I don't want. Kelly Olinick, I don't want. Tyler Johnson is at 6,000, so he needs 30. He's been right there that entire time. Um. Now, I think that's it for me here. Although, bam, at 43. That's entertaining a little bit. It's just Whiteside's extra minutes kind of concern me. That's probably it. So next we'll go to the Nets. 100 point implied total is uh, dead last on the day. So, you know. Not good. What do we got? God, there's so many damn people that have played for the Nets. Um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson looks really good. Lavert, I believe, is questionable. So he is uh, doubtful to be in my lineup. I think it's just Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Dinwiddie is 6,300 and 6,500. I'm good there. His minutes have been down. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I'm going to say that I would only play him on DK. I'm good with Levert and Carroll. Alan Crabb, <clears throat> 4,300 on DK is appealing. He needs 27, we'll say, for 6x on DK. I 
he's just not scoring like you would want him to. Um, nah, that's probably it. No need to have a ton of Brooklyn. To the Pels we go. Pels hosting the Mavs. 109.5 implied total. Tied for third. Should be getting a decent chunk of people here. Rondo revenge game. <laughs> okay, everybody kind of looks good here. I like AD more than I like Boogie. Mostly because of price. But they're both going to be um, in play. So Cousins is 11,000 on FanDuel, 11-1 on DK. Um, I like them both. I wouldn't play them both, but I like. I think they're both in really good spots tonight. Yeah. Okay, Drew, uh, seventy-seven hundred on Fanduel. 7,300 on DK, hmm, he needs 38 for value on FanDuel, that seems, been there three out of the last five. Not the Drew game for me, I don't think. Although, I don't know. Let me see Rondo first. Rondo, 5,800 and 6,100. Ugh, I was hoping to take him tonight, too. He's 30. Obviously, the last game out, 47.9 <clears throat> fantasy points, 25 assists. Rondo's probably GPP only. Well, Rondo's definitely GPP only, but... I can't pull the trigger there. Maybe I can. Okay. To the Mavs. Um, 103 implied total. 13th on the night. Um, just pretty uninteresting team. They don't really have... Unless everything fits for one of these guys, I rarely have a Mav. Okay. Interesting copy job there. Okay. So, I think this looks good for Wes Matthews. And... Probably Dirk. So, uh, there it is again. The infamous quick double click. Barnes, I'm good. Dirk, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. So he needs 27, which I feel like he's just been smacking lately. Yeah, three straight 30-point games. He's got it coming off some rest. This might be the first night I have a little bit of Dirk. Dennis Smith, I'm fine. Berea, I'm fine. I will look at Wesley Matthews, 4,600 on FanDuel. 4,300 on DK. He needs 23. I won't have a ton of it, but it could be a Wes Wathews. Yeah. He probably won't have any points. Ah, oh, it's Wesley. There we go. The couple lineups, nothing crazy there. That's all I want from uh, from that game. So we'll go to OKC. Thunder hosting the Bucks. 109.5 implied total for the Thunder. Also tied for third with the Pelicans. Okay. 
huge game potentially for Steven Adams. I'm going to look at Roberson. Probably Russ. Doesn't feel like a Paul George spot. Russ, 11-5 on both sites. Um... Yeah, I'm, I like Russ. I think Russ is in, in line for a big one. Fantasy Country doesn't seem to agree. Paul George, 8,400 and 7,800. I'm fine there. Steven Adams, though. This might be my favorite center play so far. I don't have any interest in Mello. And then Roberson, 4,300 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. So can he get to 20 is basically the question. Um, he has in his last two. I'm going to ride that hot wave. Don't rare, I rarely take Roberson, so that's pretty interesting. Now we'll go to the Bucks. Uh, 100.5 implied total, 17th out of 18 on the night. That is... Uh, Dreadful. Giannis has just not been Giannis lately. I do want to look at his um his chart here. Make that a little bigger. Yeah, that's a pretty solid drop off since the beginning of December. Not been playing as well of late. Feels like a good spot to rebound, no? Um, looks like a pretty solid Tony Snell game. I don't hate it for Bledsoe either. Not big on Middleton. So Giannis is 11-3 on FanDuel, 10-7 on DK. Man. Not a great matchup. Not a great line. Not a great pace. Hasn't been playing well. All signs point me in the direction of, of fading Giannis. So I'm going to do that. Middleton is 7,300 on both sides. I'm not interested. Uh, Eric Bledsoe, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. I'm interested in Bledsoe. He's got Westbrook on the other side. Uh, Brogdon, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Um, I don't remember seeing his name here. Um, yeah, I'm okay with Brogdon. He's just underpriced a little bit. And then Snell, the only one I want to look at. 3,600 on FanDuel, 37 on DK. Has he done anything at all? Best he's done is 20 since he's been back. Um, man, I can see Tony Snell having a decent game, but that is a, that is a dart. Now we head to the 10 o'clock games. Sacramento Kings hosting the Phoenix Suns. And oh boy. Boy, is there a lack of talent here. Oh my god, that it seriously changed itself. This works. So, Kings, 106.25 implied total. Eighth on the night. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to make of this game. Each team has used, like, 25 dudes. I, everybody plays such weird rotations. Okay. So, Willie Colley Stein looks amazing. 
I don't trust Zebo's minutes, so it might just be Willie and that's it. Zebo, 5,800 and 6,600. I have him at 24 minutes. Um, I think that if you want him, you only can take him on FanDuel. I think that 6,600 price tag is way too high. Willie Colley Stein, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. He needs 35 for value. It's been there in his last three. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. How? George Hill, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. So he needs 26, 27? Against the Suns, not a lot of point guard defense. I'm okay with having a little bit of George Hill. I don't want any part of Buddy. I don't want any part of Bogdan. I don't want any part of the rest of it. Now we'll move to Phoenix. Suns, 103.75 implied total, which would be 12th on the night. I mean, at least Booker's back. When you get somebody that has a fantasy pulse. Huge, huge spot for Devin Booker. Love it. Do I really have them projected for 272 minutes? That can't be right. Oh, it's adding Bledsoe's minutes in. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to look at Booker. No way will I look at TJ Warren. Um, I'll probably avoid Bender and Chris. Booker, 7,800 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. That's a bummer. Um, you want Devin Booker. He's a, a monstrously better play on FanDuel than he is on DK. But 42. I don't hate it on DK. It's just not good. Whereas on FanDuel, it's a really good price for him. I don't want TJ Warren. I don't really want Alex Len. Tyler Eulis, 3,900 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. Now, I just need to get the hell away from this team. Yeah. Warriors hosting the Hornets. Um. Warriors, 112.5 implied total, second on the night. Hornets making the trip across the country. Not a good spot. Okay. Durant looks great. Clay looks great. Draymond looks great. Probably it. Durant, 11-3 on FanDuel, 10-6 on DK. Um, love it. I think I like, I think Durant is my stud for the day. I think I like Durant the most out of everybody. Draymond, 83 and 79. I'm fine with that. And then Clay, 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. So he needs 38-ish. On FanDuel. It's just a great game for him. I like them all. I'll have a smattering of all of them, but I'll have Durant the most. And then uh, Hornets. 101.5 implied total. 16th. Um, not much to get excited about here. It's about as bad of a situation as it can be traveling 3,000 miles to go play the best team ever. 
Good luck with that. Okay. Like Dwight. And that might be it. Um. Maybe MKG. Dwight is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK, so he needs 40 on FanDuel. Two straight there. Um, I'm fine with it. No thanks on Kemba. I don't want Batum. I don't want Lamb. MKG, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. 25. I prefer him on DraftKings. I don't love him on FanDuel, but I do love him on DK. It's not out, It's not outlandish to take him on FanDuel, though. And then the last game of the night... Lakers hosting the Clippers. There's not a line on this. Blake Griffin is questionable. Um, right now I have him in, and since there's no home court here, um, I've got the Clippers favored by a couple. We'll see where that line really shakes out. Okay, so for the Lake Show... I want to look at Ingram. I don't really want to look at Kuzma. I want to look at Jordan Clarkson. Maybe Josh Hart. So Kuzma, 74 and 75. Um, that's, he needs 37 for value on FanDuel. Um, not like the Clippers are going to be putting up a terribly large amount of resistance. I feel like I'm forcing that. But he's been good. He's been really, really good. So maybe I'm not. Ingram. 7,300 on FanDuel. 6,600 on DK. Um, he needs 38. Right? Yeah, 36. On FanDuel, he got there in his first game back, um, but I love him on DraftKings. I probably wouldn't go after him on FanDuel. Clarkson, 7,600. Uh, so he needs 35. You know, with Lonzo out, I'm cool with it. Not a lot of guard defense on the opposite side. And then KCP is a DK only play for me. He's $900 cheaper, which is a giant amount at that price. $6,300 on FanDuel, $5,400 on DK. He needs $32 on DK for 6X. Um, can definitely get there. Josh Hart is $4,400 on FanDuel and $4,600 on DK. So he would need... 22 on FanDuel. He's fine on both sides as a low salary filler at guard. Um, but you don't, it's not like the we need to lock in Josh Hart game. And then finally, we take a look at the Clippers. Um, obviously, this is going to be, you know, 
up in the air. If Blake doesn't play, the whole projection changes. We need to move around, you know, 30 minutes on both sides of the coin. But right now, the assumption is that Blake plays. And outside of DeAndre, and maybe Austin Rivers, I don't have a terribly large amount of interest. But let's look. There it is again. Need to buy a new mouse this weekend. Clippers. So DeAndre, 7,700 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. That's disgusting. Um, I like DeAndre, but only on FanDuel. I'm going to pass on Lou Williams. Although, what did that look like? He doesn't get... It's, it's not the best matchup for him. Oh, that's, I think that's a fade. Oh, well, Lou. Uh, I'm fine with Lou Williams on FanDuel. Take the Lakers or take the Clippers on FanDuel. Take the. Take the Lakers on DK. Um, so Blake is 7,200 on DK. That's really interesting, but I can't pull the trigger. And then Rivers, his price is too high. Hey, Dosich is 5,000 on DK. That's 20, he needs 30. For 6x. And you can't get there. Alright, so I think that is it. I think that's the short list. Let's filter that down now. That's a long list, but you know, nine games. A lot of uh, site dependent people too, so takes up some space. Let's add the. How did I do that? That's a problem. Let's uh, let's add the projections and see what pops. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Oh, it's gonna crash. When's the last time I saved? At least I can pull the list from the video, but. Oh, oh. Hey, oh, got the save in. Now, let's refresh. Copy these projections. Alrighty, what do we got? I think this is going to be interesting. I don't really have a good feel for this. It seems like a lot of guys have the same sort of value to me. I'm hoping to see a lot of Kyle Lowry here, though. Actually, what I'm hoping is that I get no Kyle Lowry, which is exactly how that shook out. <laughs> All right, Corey Joseph, Lance Stevenson. So I'm cool with Lance. I won't have Corey. I won't have Paul George. I won't have Jordan Bell. I won't have Taya Dosich. Don't love the first optimal. Um, let's say I kill Corey Joseph and George and Jordan Bell and Taya Dosich. That might not be the night tonight on DK. Ah. No, it's going to be interesting. I don't really like it on DK. 
I would want to lock Lowry right out of the gate. Does that change how it looks? That brings Harden in, which is interesting. Yeah, it's gonna take some uh, take some research today. Let's check out FanDuel now. Come on, Cruncher. Alrighty, FanDuel now. That looks a little bit more my speed. Nope, not what I wanted. Russ, Dennis Smith Jr., no thank you. Harden, Lou Williams, Lance, Oubre, Markin, and Bell, Gortat. Yeah, just get rid of Bell and get rid of Dennis Smith Jr., and I think we'll be in some business. Not my favorite, but that's not a bad lineup. I probably wouldn't want Nene. Let's get rid of Nene. So much red. I wouldn't want Portis either. Man, it's going to be hard to put together a lineup I actually like. Alright, so there's one last peek at the short list if you need to pause it and take a look. Um, that's where we're at. That's all I got for tonight. Gonna be a weird one. Gonna be a real weird one. I don't have a good feel for this slate. We might need some news. So that's it. Um, you know, like the video if you liked it. Uh, like the video if you didn't like it. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check me out on Patreon, where I provide no content whatsoever outside of everything that you already see. But, you know, it's just nice. Um, I'll have updates through the day, and uh, I'll keep you posted on the rest of the night. Good luck tonight.